Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I know I'm random on uh, doing videos and the Lord either gives me the time and the inkling for words to share with you or not. <laughs> now it's becoming like a flood of the Holy Spirit. And so I have one video in the making that's like going to be 30 minutes long. And this one I'm going to try to make really short so I can put it up right away. There's a couple things I want to talk about. Number one, um, this is like the third time I've tried to make it. So that means I'm supposed to make it because things keep happening. Um, number one, I'm going to talk about the coronavirus. And number two, I want to talk about journalism. Okay, so number one, the coronavirus. So when I started hearing about it, and I've been a journalist for like 20 years, so there were many viruses or quote unquote pandemics that have flowed in and out that have caused all kinds of fear, that have mandated all kinds of shots, and companies made tons of money, and then they found out that it wasn't like they thought it would be, and all this, right? The difference with the coronavirus and the past pandemics, quote unquote, like the H191 or the H151, is, um, they're keeping things quieter. Now, I look at mainstream, they're not, they're having to say something because they can't ignore it as a journalist. They have to put it out there. For a long time, they've ignored it, kind of minimized, right? But it's in our faces a little bit. So therefore, the mainstream news is talking about it more the thing is, is I've been like waiting every week looking at it and I saw it act like a snowball effect. It exponentially has, has gotten worse very quickly, doubled in one day. The amount of known infections. Now there's differences in our testing kits. So there's some stuff going on in the background and you have to know I've been a journalist for 20 years so I look at this stuff and I, I vet this stuff and I talk to people. So I'm going to give some background here. I lived in Italy for 11 years. I look at the news, my weekly look at, let's see what's going on with the coronavirus thing. And I saw, this is the third day now, two day, uh, three days ago. Uh, they discovered over a hundred cases in a region in the northern part of Italy um, and had quarantined 12 towns and so then I get on the Italian news last night watch it in Italian see what's going on read the Italian newspapers online see what's going on this morning I called some of my friends in Italy and uh, to see what was going on because I have friends that live in that region where it's quarantined. I also have some friends that live just a little bit south of that. So um, I've been getting people telling me that they think it's fake. <laughs> and we have to be careful, guys. Not everything is a conspiracy. So in journalism, now I'm tying these together. I'm trying to educate you a little bit from my own personal experience. Journalism, yes, sometimes will ignore things, will either exaggerate things, they will cut off sentences, ignore the rest of the sentences, put things out of context, make it to where something is that is not, you know, telling lies to become truth. We all know that. I've seen it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I stopped. My publisher asked me to do something unethical. I went home over the weekend and prayed. The Lord gave me some scriptures. I went back in and I quit the next Monday. But we also should not exclude ourselves from being informed and to be watchers. We are believers. The Lord wants us to know what's going on. And so if the mainstream news was silent at first and is starting to put out information about something because they cannot ignore it. They have to be somewhat accountable to the people. They have to 
you know, maximize as much trust as they can get, right? To have readers, but they have to make their advertisers happy and keep the dollars rolling. Well, who funds in America the journalism, the pharmaceutical companies? You're talking about, you know, the elite people that have lots of money, lots of corporations that want to make more money off of the people of America. My friends that live up north can become fined. They're going to charge a 300 euro fine that they're not really enforcing right now if they see anyone out. Okay, because they're really trying to contain the virus. So it is not pretty, guys. It is absolutely real and it is not pretty. So they have certain times where the grocery stores were open, huge long lines with everyone wearing masks. Everybody knows each other. These are small towns uh, for the grocery stores. And the grocery stores, you know, are open. Uh, some of the fruit markets are open at certain times, but pretty soon they're all going to be closing down. So people are stocking up on food. Now you think about Venezuela, you think about China, you think about the economy, it's a snowball, it's tumbling, it's exponential. So, this is longer than I thought it would be because I'm detail oriented. But, so my friends are stocking up on a month's worth of food. They're planning on being totally isolated in their homes. They are getting a bunch of movies, trying to think of projects they can do, you know, and buying rice and canned meats. And I told them to get some elderberry, which is something you guys should do. Um, the masks are gone. They're sold out. Um, they're scared. These people are scared because it's real. I have friends in Milan, and so they stopped the football games out there, soccer, and um, closed down the universities and the schools for a week. Um, it's They closed down the Duomo, the big church. They're having tourism issues now. And then down towards Florence, all the people I have friends out there, they're doing the same thing. They're going out and buying food. They're already going to start isolating themselves beforehand. They do not want to get the virus. Now the government, how do they know compared to America that there are already like a hundred cases because they were testing the people with any of the symptoms. Okay. Right away. In America, in 47 states, there has been zero testing with anyone with the symptoms. The only people they tested were the people that came off those boats. Then the CDC reported that they sent out test kits to all the states, but then they found out that the test kits are, are not good. That's like the H1 um, five one virus shots that they were mandating everyone taking so these test kits this pharmaceutical company made tons of money making test kits working their people 24 hours in manufacturing sending them out and they're fault they're faulty So we're not testing our people here. So we only have 14 cases, really? Now I can understand in Italy, there it's a tourism industry. Every, every city is based on tourism. The people live a lot by that because it's a beautiful country, a lot to offer good food, etc. Well, they're trying to figure out what to do with that. So what's, what's the downfall? the economy okay now we're gonna we there's already a downfall the GP, GDP in China was actually I think at zero 
a few days ago that I heard. So the economy is a repercussion. The, you know, not only the virus, the isolation, but the stopping of the transportation, delivering of food. Soon, they're going to be closing the stores and the shops and the businesses in Italy. Chew on that for a minute. So, all I'm saying is, in my dream that I had, which I'm going to make the second video from um, about, is that there's a storm, there's a tsunami, and it was huge. And all I saw was the tsunami and the waves, but we were in a bubble. I was in a bubble, but my my dreams or visions are not only for me they're for the body so the body will be in a protective bubble doesn't mean you won't get the coronavirus it means you will be protected okay so it's serious guys and I'm not trying to fear monger but I want you to be awake because of my dream because of what's happening, it comes a little close to home when my friends are in a panic right now. And I don't want to lose my friends. It makes me want to just tear up. And I just want to fly out there and be with them. <laughs> um, guys, just be aware. Don't throw out the baby in the bathwater. Watch the news and just kind of follow and understand that in our country, we're not testing. So... Just be careful, guys, okay? We are not immune, and I'm not trying to fear monger. And also, I want to say one more thing. Sorry, this is longer than I thought. Um, the storm. The storm is not only the virus. The storm is a spiritual attack on the people. I have been going through utter spiritual attacks a lot of my friends have been going through utter spiritual attacks of like intensity and I'm sure that some of you have been too there's something happening in the heavens that is reflected here on earth and um, as we know, there's a lot more deceptions in the church, a lot of coldness towards Christianity. I watched a news article, and I don't remember where, on MSN somewhere. They were talking about in South Korea and the cor coronavirus infection from the church. They were mocking the church and assuming and blaming Christians for the spread of coronavirus in South Korea because some people quote unquote as the anchor said said it was a cult and they get a little close and they hug each other to say hello excuse me guys they said that on national news about a church meeting on a Sunday of Christians in South Korea being the culprit of the spread of the virus. That was a huge red flag for me. It should be a huge red flag for you. This is our attack. Now, if you go back to the Holocaust, who do they blame? They blame the Jews. If you go back even further in history during the Black Plague, who did they blame? The Christians now back then during the Black Plague a lot of people did go to church and they were closed you know close you know interactions on the during the church services and it was one of the reasons why it spread uh, they didn't wash hands and do all that stuff like we do today but I can see the writing on the wall guys they're going to start blaming the Christians and then the Jews for the demise of our economy and the spread of the virus. It's the beginning 
I feel, even in the Western nations, of more outward persecution and mockery of Christianity. These are our attacks. This is the storm. We are in a bubble, and um, God bless you. Watch my other video that I'll put up a little bit later when I finish it about the dream. It will be a lot more encouraging than this one, but I'm just, what can I say? I have to share this stuff, so God bless you. God bless you. Shalom.